What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. First of all, let me give a big shout out to subscriber Ed Frank 5601. Ed Frank, I salute you. He went on one of my other videos and informed me of some BS that happened on Scap Attack's channel. He said, Boo, did you see they blocked Scap Attack video? OMG, they blocked Scap Attack's video. I said, no, I didn't. If it had to do with the truth about LeBron, then I'm not surprised. They don't want the truth put out. Ed Frank responds back. Thank goodness he's a warrior. Put out a new one. Applaud. You giving him props. Thanks. And I said, I might have to address this later. And here I am addressing this later. Ed Frank, thank you for the, the update and letting me know what, what happened. So I don't know the details. Being that Scap Attack put out another one, I'm assuming it has to do directly with the one that was blocked to some degree. So after I watch Scap's video, I'll probably have some things that I need to unload on about everything that happened, including the content of the video. Um, uh, but while I'm here, make sure you go subscribe to Scap Attack. Great channel, uh, great content creator, definitely on the rise. Uh, the A1 content creator, editing, uh, everything, storytelling, putting the truth out there. Scap is one of the best out here on YouTube right now. You feel me? So um, let me go ahead. Let's watch this video and see what the hell happened. Greetings, my dearest subscribers and anyone else out there who might be following my content. This, an important message regarding my most recent video posted two days ago entitled Kobe Owns LeBron and Saved Team USA. The video was up for roughly 36 hours and got 34,000 views before I was notified of the video's banning. Oh, it, oh! it has since been blocked from all regions regions worldwide in what amounts to me as a thinly veiled and pathetic attempt to block not just a video but an idea. An idea that I believe very strongly in and therefore I am not going to back down. I'm not leaving! I am instead going to lay out the facts in a new video right here. I want the truth! Forgive me as I won't be waxing poetic like I usually do. The edits won't be as tight as they typically are. Simply outlying the undeniable stone cold facts. You can't handle the truth! of one of the most prolific losers in basketball history crapping in his pants on a worldwide stage I got poopy. before having one of the greatest winners the sport has ever seen bail him and the entire national team out when it mattered most. The time Kobe Bryant proved he owns LeBron James. And it's a story that begins in the 1936 Olympic Games in Berlin, Germany, when basketball was first introduced as an official medal event. And from those first games and running all the way through the 2004 Olympics, the United States of America would dominate international play without equal, amassing a record of 117 and two in international play over that time. And once the US started sending NBA players in the 1992 Summer Games in Barcelona with the famed Dream Team, the Americans never lost a single game in any international tournament until the Chosen One arrived in Athens for the 2004 games and the legend of LeBron's would be born. But it wasn't just LeBron along for the ride. The 2004 men's national team also included players like Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, 28 year old prime Tim Duncan and 29 year old Allen Iverson. Yes, prime Tim Duncan and LeBron James, two players we routinely hear revisionist history about both being better than Kobe Bryant, teamed up on an international all-star our team and not only failed to win the gold medal, they got absolutely humiliated and embarrassed the entire country. Why? Why? The Americans got destroyed in their first game in the tournament by Puerto Rico by a final score of 92 to 73. 
they would then lose to Lithuania and ultimately Argentina in the semifinals before collecting their bronze medals. Three losses, three in the span of one tournament consisting of eight games. The Americans had lost two games total in 70 years coming into those games. And in the span of 10 days went five and three behind the greatest power forward ever who allegedly was the best player of the 2000s and of course the self-proclaimed GOAT. That one so right there made me the greatest player of all time. Following this epic humiliation, Team USA would clean house completely. Jerry Colangelo was named managing director of the national team program by USA Basketball Executives Committee in 2005, while Mike Krzyzewski was named the head coach, and LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Carmelo Anthony were named team captains heading into the 2006 FIBA World Championships in Japan, where the Americans would be shocked once again, this time by Greece and it again would be bronze for Team USA. Two tournaments in two years, four losses, and two bronze medals for Team USA. Enter the actual best player in the world, Kobe Bryant, who had seen enough and decided to pledge his commitment to returning American basketball to prominence. But he would first announce his presence on the team in a famous blue-white scrimmage while the team was training Game in winner. Las Vegas in the Game summer winner. of 2007. LeBron was just coming off of a fraudulent finals run a few weeks earlier, one of the most overrated playoff runs in NBA history where LeBron in his fourth NBA year managed to navigate arguably the worst conference in NBA history during the post. This, this uh, red blue game or blue white game, whatever it's called. Yeah, Kobe showed why they sought him out. They specifically said, we need Kobe Bryant. He was the big catch, the big headline when he agreed to sign on. And in that scrimmage, he hit the game winning shot. This is what you get. This is the type of leadership. This is the type of mentality. This is the type of player you get. He was the alpha dog amongst all those other all stars. Go ahead, Scap. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you tell it, bro. Oh, season beating the 41 and 41 Wizards in the first round, the 41 and 41 Nets in the second round, and the 50 win Detroit Pistons without Ben Wallace in the Eastern Conference Finals before getting swept in the NBA Finals by the Spurs while averaging 22 points on 35% shooting. A playoff run that had many speculating LeBron had passed Kobe up as the best player in the NBA. I remember they were so saying Bryant that. and James would be separate for the famed blue-white scrimmage in Nevada that summer. An intensely fierce battle of a grouping of the best of the best NBA players exerting the intensity of a high-stakes playoff game. With Kobe's blue team trailing by one point with under 10 seconds left in the game, LeBron would refuse to guard him as Kobe had cooked the fake king throughout the earlier stanzas of the second half. Instead, the longer Tayshaun Prince was put on Bryant for the final possession, who promptly iced the go-ahead shot directly in Prince's face with six seconds left. But the White would have one more shot at the win, with LeBron looking to assert his dominance. Unlike at the other end though, Kobe was unafraid to guard LeBron and his minuscule bag clamping him down and nearly forcing a travel before LeBron tossed up this ugly looking potential game winner. Kobe, a game high 26 points and the game winning shot while clamping down LeBron defensively who finished the game with 18 points, getting it done on both ends of the floor and showing Team USA who the best was. A lesson they learned well, a message that would be reasserted in the gold medal game one year later in the 2000s 2008 summer games in Beijing and instead of being played out in a scrimmage it would be displayed on a world stage the US team rolled through their group play as well as their first two rounds in the knockout play winning their first seven games of the tournament by an average of 30 points per game before colliding with Spain in the gold medal game 
and Spain pushed the U.S. to the brink, cutting the Americans' lead to 91-89 with just under eight minutes remaining in the fourth. That's when LeBron James would do typical LeBron James-like things in the clutch, while Kobe Bryant would do typical Kobe Bryant-like things. Bryant would hit a series of difficult and incredibly pressure-packed shots down the stretch, scoring or assisting on 18 of Team USA's final 24 points during the last six minute stretch of the game. LeBron scored two points in the entire fourth quarter and zero in the final five minutes. Kobe saved LeBron and Team USA from failing to hit the top of the podium in three straight international tournaments. And while liars on mass media stages and teenagers who never watched a single second of Kobe's prime can whine about LeBron's perceived superiority, LeBron himself knew what it was. Kobe was already like drenched in sweat and we was like, oh yeah, he different. LeBron's golden savior would go on to win the next two NBA crowns in 2009 and 2010. And while LeBron would go on to steal some cheap rings with a collection of various competitive balance destroying super teams, and even Tim Duncan himself would gravy train a fifth ring on a team with four Hall of Famers on it, anyone watching international basketball in the 2000s knows what the score is. Add it up with Kobe's five titles and seven finals finals appearances from 1999 to 2010 and Kobe Bryant owned the 2000s like virtually no other player in modern NBA history ever has. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff by Scab Attack as always. Uh, First I want to say I'm going to put a also a link in the description. There's going to be a lot of links in the description of this video. First I'm going to put a link for one video that I put out long time ago um, when the Redeem Team documentary dropped on Netflix. I did a video about that because I thought they were going to completely try to revise history as we see them do. Because before the Redeem Team video came out on the major networks, on especially on uh, FS1 Sports, the ticker or the, the title for the subject at hand, they were saying LeBron's Redeem Team, LeBron's Redeem Team. And I was like, no, that was Kobe's Redeem Team. This is the BS I'm talking about. So when the when the video, dro- when the when the content dropped on Netflix, I thought it was going to be complete revisionist history. And uh, fortunately, it wasn't so but but here's the thing that i realized once the the documentary dropped and it wasn't this complete revisionist history bs you notice that none of the major networks talked about that redeem team documentary there wasn't a murmur about it a murmur about kobe bryant's impact kobe bryant's leadership the way kobe bryant spearheaded to the spearheaded the team to the gold medal not a word on any of those networks But had the narrative been about LeBron James, they would have been talking about it for a week or two. So I had put out a video on that. And like I said, I'll put a link to that one. Go check it out. Now, another thing I want to talk about is that Scott touched on briefly about Kobe Bryant's run. His run. And he's right. From 99 to 2010, however you want to look at it, however you look at it, 10 slash 11 years, he had five championships. Five championships. Technically, the finals was in the year 2000. So calendar-wise, 2000 to 2010 calendar-wise, that's five championships in a decade. No other player has that. Okay? Okay. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to say no other player has that, but uh, Kobe's contemporaries is what, what I'm talking about. Kobe Bryant's contemporaries that he played against, you know, in those 2000s moving forward. Nobody else, nobody else did that but Kobe. Now, I had also put out a video where I addressed Draymond Green a few months ago. Draymond Green made a comment saying that LeBron James was has been the best player in the NBA since the year 2005. So I addressed Draymond Green's BS and that and y'all know Draymond Green is a clutch client. 
and he is now a bronze sexual and still playing in the NBA, supposed to be a competitor over here, LeBron James. So I put out a video addressing that comment about that lie, and you'll find it in the description of this video. Now, regarding Scap Attack being blocked, that's some BS, and I know it's BS, I know. And I'm glad I watched the video before commenting on you know, speculating whatever. First of all, I'm a content creator. And if there is legitimately something that has some major, you know, copyright issues or something that the originator of this video content does not want aired, even in a reaction video, like they, nobody can use this, but the channel, the source channel, your video will be blocked globally before it can even post. Trust me, it's happened to me before let alone being on on the YouTube air for over 30 hours. So that tells me that wasn't the issue. So what's likely the issue is that they don't want the truth put out. However, they got wind of it 30 something hours later of what Scap was saying, what Scap was displaying, what Scap was showing. They decided to go back and block it globally, or it could even be a situation where a viewer, this happens all the time, a viewer, a hater, a hater, not liking what they're not liking what they're seeing. And what Scap is saying, even though it's 100 percent all true, a bronze sexual probably reported it saying, oh, this guy is uh, using, you know, some uh, USA basketball footage that belongs to whatever source and they're like okay we're taking it down that I, that happens all the time too and for you people that go on people's youtube channel and snitching on them over some bs like that because you don't like what they're talking about you could go f yourself bro you might got nothing better to do than a snitch snitch on people's content what's it to you why are you mad why is it so personal because it hurts the truth hurts doesn't it Go find something better to do with your time. You know, there's something called the dislike button. You can go ahead and hit the dislike button. I think that's still a thing, right? Go ahead and hit the dislike button and then go, go, go about your way. Please, don't be on here snitching on people's channels. They ain't doing nothing wrong, especially man out here putting out the truth. Please, I don't care how much of a bronze sexual or a D writer you are to your whatever team player whatever the content is go find something better to do with your time than snitch on people's content this guy works hard to put these videos out it's time consuming so if you out here doing that reporting people's videos please especially especially when it's all truthful content please please go find something to do better with your time like I said, if this if there was legitimate reason like Scap was using extended footage, extended footage, you know, of you know, USA basketball games, it would have been blocked before it was even allowed to go public. And I know he I know he doesn't do that. I know he doesn't do that. He's not he's not a reaction channel. He's not just taking a, you know, three straight minutes of a basketball game and posting it. You know what I mean? So it's 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 it, it had nothing to do with the content. Well, the, the video content itself. And it, it, what it has to do with, they don't like the truth being out there. They don't like this narrative. They don't. And you better believe Google, YouTube, whatever, they have little constituents and things like that, little minions, whatever, in there. And this, this, this Clutch Sports LeBron James reach, people think I'm crazy. No. They have a reach across all these different platforms, social media, social outlets, and there is a, an amount of control they have, and they don't want certain content on their platform. And I don't know what type of description, you know, usually they'll send them, they'll send them an email, you know, why you got blocked or a comment on why you got blocked when you mouse over it, a uh, description of why. It was probably some BS. They, they, they probably point out oh you use some some this this video footage and this person doesn't want you to use that video oh, please stop it please stop it it is a small amount of footage i'm sure he used with his creative um style over it which is generally allowed in youtube across the board 
especially if it's just small segments of videos, even with no audio over it, even more so. I don't want to hear it. It's BS. Like I said, if it was legitimately supposed to be blocked, it would have been blocked damn near immediately, not 30-something hours later, accumulating a whole bunch of views in the meantime. That's BS. That's, that's BS. Hell, I done reacted to a whole, a whole damn Dream Team documentary. The whole damn documentary about the Dream Team. They didn't knock that down. That wasn't blocked globally. It wasn't blocked nowhere. But LeBron James had nothing to do with that USA content. That's why. I'm telling you, man. It's, it's weird, man. It's scary. It's scary. It's bad for sports. Very bad for sports. Very bad for history. It is. Scap Attack is absolutely correct, man. It was, it was abysmal with that LeBron James team dead. And those tenures, those USA tenures, I hear bring the bronze home. LeBron's, I like how you did that, Scap. And then they said, we need, Co it, it was literally like superhero style, bro. Like if Kobe Bryant was Batman, dog, they done, the, the Kobe, his symbol, right? His symbol, um, the samurai sheath, the snakehead symbol. It's like they, they put the, the, the bat symbol, bro, into the air. It's like, we can't lose anymore. Kobe Bryant's symbol into the sky. Kobe sitting on the top of Staples Center with that, with that brooding Batman stance as he looks up into the night at the symbol. And he answered the call. That was Kobe Bryant's team, man. Make no mistake about it. He was the alpha dog. He was. And he let everybody know from the jump what type of work ethic you need to be this great. And you heard LeBron James say it in that video what he was talking about this when he said this guy's different. Before... They were supposed to meet up for, for, for training. I don't know, weight training, whatever, basketball training, whatever. Kobe Bryant had already been in the gym for hours, worked up a sweat. These guys come in laughing, just ate breakfast, having a good time, and they see Kobe in there, towel, drenched. Already did one or two workouts already. Kobe setting the precedence. On top of that, he was the defensive anchor on that team. He showed a level of defense that none of them, none of them, none of those players were ready to put out. They saw, they finally get him to play with Kobe and be in a locker room with him and seeing him train. They saw what it takes to be as great as him for an extended a period of time. What his mentality is, how this guy is wired. Facts. I'm not making any of this up. He made it his assignment to guard the best player on all of those teams, even in the scrimmages, made it his assignment to make sure he guards the best player, especially in key moments of the game. Especially in key moments. Am I making this up? Hit the game winner. Guarded LeBron on the other end. Forced him into a bad shot. And like the Spain game, Kobe was absolutely lighting. I was watching the game, bro. And you know what happened? What Scap, Scap didn't mention? I'm going to tell y'all what happened. When Kobe Bryant arrived on the team, he told the whole squad he was tired of watching them lose and that his goal was to bring the gold back to the USA. And Coach K admitted, Coach K admitted that they needed Kobe Bryant, that he specifically wanted Kobe Bryant because he had concerns about the team's ability to win and play team basketball. Get that. Kobe Bryant, right? The, 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 the ball hog. And Coach K calling on him, the winner that he, knowing the winner that he is, knowing the leader that he is, knowing that Kobe Bryant cares more about winning than anything, brought him along to help improve team basketball because Coach K knows. He knows. Coach K, quote, Quote, Coach K said this. A lot of them weren't known as great team players. I had a lot of concerns. That's why we recruited Kobe Bryant. Quote from Coach K. Talking about the guy who people constantly say, ball hog, ball hog, ball hog, ball hog, for his entire career, every single possession, ball hog, ball hog, ball hog. I've already put out videos 
debunking that BS. And I'll be as a hardcore Kobe Bryant fan, as a truth teller, I've always said, yeah, there were moments, there were games where Kobe Bryant shot too much. Yeah, there were games where Kobe Bryant ball hogged. But to label his entire career as some type of ball hog that never passed a ball is a false narrative. Sorry, it is. It is. I watched the guy play. Yeah, there were moments, especially during a stretch where him and Shaq weren't getting along. There was a stretch there where he just really wasn't passing the ball. And I, I was pissed. I was furious. We were There were some games we could have won had he, you know, looked for his teammates more. And he didn't. But over a 20-year career to say that's his story would be false. I'm sorry. Coach K knows that. And he had concerns about the team not playing team basketball. So he called on the man that knows that will, this man will do anything to win. When that, when that game started getting close in that fourth quarter against Spain, in the huddle, Coach K, not verbatim, not verbatim, Coach K basically said, get the hell, get, get the ball to Kobe Bryant and get the hell out of his way. Not verbatim, but that's, that's the point he drove across to everybody. All those great players on the team, the LeBrons, the Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, whoever else, I think Chris Paul might have been on that team. Get the ball to Kobe Bryant, and he's going to take us home. Am I making this up? I got a quote here from Collins during the broadcast, or one of the, one of the broadcasts, around when Kobe Bryant started lighting Spain up. I'll read it to you. Shh. Don't say a word. Is there anybody in the NBA who loves these moments more than Kobe Bryant? He's been called upon to play defense, but this could be a gigantic four-point play. Not only that, Rudy Fernandez has just fought out of the ball game. I'm going to read, continue to read on. In one fell swoop, Bryant nearly doubled Team USA's lead and forced Spain's leading scorer to go to the bench. Before Bryant shot the free throw, it was noted, quote, You think about it, the United States was up two. Coach K took that time out. How many points has Kobe Bryant had? his hands in. Remember, he had 10 straight points where he either scored or had the assist. This was the call. This was the call. And he put up more. Scout Attack showed you the numbers. What Scout Attack said? He had 18 or 20 or something like that of the team's last 20-something points. He ran a gauntlet through Spain. Kobe Bryant was the alpha on that team. He was captain. And LeBron James was co-captain. And you saw the alpha, the leader Step up, especially when the game seemed like it was on the line and when things could possibly get real out of hand. You saw the guy that said, enough of the BS. I'm bringing home this gold trophy. You either come along with me or I'm going to drag you through the finish line. Asserted himself with confidence, not a worry in the world, not scared of failure, not scared of losing. Kobe Bryant has never had that problem his entire career. Even when he was a 19-year-old boy in the NBA, an 18-year-old. No matter how much his drive and his mentality was far ahead of his body and his skill at the time, he never shied away. He was never scared of failing or losing. Once you have succumbed yourself to fear of failure, you've already lost. He's never been wired like that. LeBron James, not wired like that. And uh, yes, LeBron James has addressed many of his clutch demons over the years. I'll be the first to admit that. I ain't a LeBron James hater. I'm not a hater. He has definitely got better in the clutch. But there are still times where his demons tend to show up in clutch moments, especially when it comes to him at the free throw line. You can't be scared of failure, folks, especially if you're an athlete. Not going to win every time. There's there's not a player in our history that's perfect. Everyone, everyone falters. Everyone stumbles. But it's how you recover. How you get back up and rise through the ashes. That part is part of the story. It's what makes it so great. Like I said, I, 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 ain't got, I ain't got no more to say. Shout out to Scap Attack. Thank you for, after them taking, taking your video down, all that work you put into it, I know. I don't do nearly as much editing as you. And I know, as somebody that used to do on the previous channels doing other types of content, I know how much work that is, all that damn editing, man. 
editing your sounds, your videos, your, your, your animations, your transitions, all of that. That's a lot of work for your, your stuff to get flagged and blocked probably on some, no, definitely on some BS. And then for you to come out and, and, and rebuttal that block with another video, I appreciate that. I understand that. That's, 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 that's not having no back down in you. That's saying, I will not be silenced. I will not let these false narratives consume everybody's brains without me doing something about it. And it is much appreciated, Scott. Folks, that's all I got to say about it. You can go check out my other videos that I put in the description of this video if you want to see me ramble on about the truth uh, with these similar topics. You know what I mean? I appreciate everyone for stopping in. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments section. Let the truth be heard. Let your truth be heard. Let your opinion be heard. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and I'm going to catch you on the next one. We out, baby.